Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and we are now here ready to discuss for a few minutes together what we in 303 often refer to as our big five. That is to say, when we come to a text and we're ready to annotate it, one of the ways that we can do that is to look at what we call our big five. Now, this is not a, a, a new way of looking at text. In fact, it's a really old way of looking at text, which is why we like to say in 303, the new is the new. The N-E-W is the K-N-E-W. Um, <clears throat> you'll remember maybe in our study of Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, the idea that the young man, here's the story from the old man. We've given uh, full lectures on this at LearnStrong.net. And some, for some number of reasons, the young man is kind of blown away by the comments of the old man. And he's somehow able to identify with it in some way. Now, as, as we look at a title or a text, we'll ask, can I approach this text from at least five different perspectives? And that's what we mean by our big five. Now, of course, our learning theory is foundational to how we understand the big five. That is to say, we're constantly looking to connect new information to old information in meaningful ways. Yes, getting information that I can use another way for us to say it. And here, I'm hopeful that the big five will be another way for us to do that. So for example, let's just use Arthur Miller's Crucible as an example. So I pick up Arthur Miller's Crucible, I read it, I watch it, I have some background information vis-a-vis -vis Aristotelian poetics, all of that, of course, being provided for you at LearnStrong.net. Now the question is, can I look at this text, the Crucible, through the prism of what we call our Big Five? That's what this is all about. Now, of course, we make this distinction between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is what I know. Wisdom is what I can actually use. Something that actually helps me to think about how I live my own life and others might live their life. In the old days, they used to call this virtues. That's the Platonist word for it. And the goal is, of course, through the analysis of text vis-a-vis -vis the Big Five, that our lives are better, maybe even we would say happier for the experience, right? Now let's do a real quick review of, in 303, what we qualify as our big five. The order does matter in this regards because we're gonna have two pairs and then we'll finally have the last and the fifth. Now, hey, hey, hey guys, this is huge. There are a lot of different ways to approach text. This is not an inclusive list. This is just the five that we in 303 are hopeful that you will be, be paying some attention to. First of all, number one, epistemology. Number two, ontology. Don't worry, we're going to define them. Number three, psychology. Number four, sociology. And then finally, number five, theodicy. Now, I'm going to give individual lectures for each one of these five. I'm going to go into quite a bit of detail for each one of these. But let's just give a quick summation of what it is. Let's take the first pair. That is to say, epistemology, ontology. Ology, obviously, study of. Epistus, of or related to knowledge. So the question of epistemology is quite literally, uh, what can I know? That is to say, okay, how much information can I actually qualify as being reliable given what I think I know about something? That's, that's epistemology, okay? Ontology is the theory or the study of being. That is to say, the question here is, who am I? If the first question is, what can I know? The second question is, who am I? And so as we get into our study of ontological questions, we're going to be talking about values. We're going to be talking about what makes us particularly important and special and valuable as human beings. Um, our next pair, psychology, the study of the individual mind, uh, versus sociology, the study of the group or collective mind. Um, and and in, in terms of psychology, we'll ask, what motivates me? In terms of sociology, we'll ask, what motivates us? And so we'll be looking at um, each one of these in turn here in a few moments. Finally, number five. And there seems to be a progression from what I know and who I am to what motivates me and what motivates the group to finally ask the question of, Theodicy, T-H-E-O-D-I-C-Y. Theo, of or related to God, the, the, the root. D-K, the root for justice or, or, or understanding of justice. And in that regards, theodicy is simply the question of pain and suffering in the world. That is to say, why must there be pain and suffering in this world? Why can't we live in a world where there's no pain, where there's no suffering? That's the theodicy question. And when we meet that here in a few moments, we'll be 
um, understanding that's central to our reality. I mean, think about the power of, the, of, of a play like The Crucible. What exactly is going on in terms of the question of theodicy we've got to ask it? Now, our study approach um, is, just to remind you, is we're going to intro each of these, outline each of these. We're going to try and reference a few titles. Notice I've just mentioned uh, Miller's Crucible um, that we enjoy studying in room 303. And our goal, of course, is to apply this to our annotative approach. At level one, what does the text say? At level two, what does the text mean? To A themes, messages, to B rhetoric. And then finally, at level three, how can I relate this information in some meaningful way to 3A, other titles, other texts, and then finally 3B, uh, myself. And the goal here is to amplify our understanding of a text, like Crucible or any number of other titles, during the annotative process by asking about our big five. But to do that really well, to engage in that kind of level of interpretation or hermeneutics is the academic $5 word for it, exegesis, another $5 word for it, to be able to play that game well, there's prisms that you can see titles and text through, and certainly our big five is the way that I'm hopeful that you'll begin to play the game. So come on back, and we'll be ready to introduce ourselves to the quest of epistemology, the study of knowledge. Thank you.